Oh my gosh, welcome to Whiskey Wednesday, everybody. I have the beautiful and amazing Kelsey Deanne on with me for Whiskey Wednesday. Kelsey, hi. Hi, Cindy. Oh my goodness. I'm, I love Whiskey Wendy, Wednesday, if I can talk today. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> the whiskey will fix that in a moment. Doing very well. Kelsey Dion is um, Scott Week Vice President. Hopefully one day she'll be president of Scott Week, that I can be vice president. That would be really cool. Anyway, <laughs> just throwing that out there. <laughs> We're so excited because we know that Whiskey Wednesday is quite popular with a lot of people. And um, so we're trying to do this. Now we've been doing a lot during lockdown through Zoom, but guys, we're gonna start getting out there in the world and doing whiskey tastings in other places. So please stay tuned, like, and subscribe to our channel. You don't wanna miss Whiskey Wednesdays moving forward or Fridays with Scott Week. We have some other really fascinating information going out on Fridays all about Scotland, history, culture, business, and innovation. So stay tuned right here, like, and subscribe. That will help us a great deal. So let's go ahead and talk about our whiskey of the week. I'm so excited because this is backwards for all of you. <laughs> Unless I have a camera person, I have to turn the camera around. So um, you're going to get it backwards. It's Aberfeldy. And I don't know if you've ever had Aberfeldy. Kelsey? Oh I my gosh. Not. <laughs> well, this is special. And I am going to, I'm going to save this bottle that, you know, you and I could, you could see that I've already had some. <laughs> it's delicious. It's, um, uh, it's really good. So let's talk a little bit about it. Um, it's Aberfeldy is known as the golden dram. Okay. Um, it is a single malt, a Highland single malt. It's classic fruity whiskey with honey richness and a smooth, approachable taste. And this is very true. It's very smooth. There's a lot of honey, heavy honey in it. And Aberfeldy, I should say, was historically peated, but it is no longer. So if you are not a fan of the peat, you're good to go with Aberfeldy. Um, the 21-year-old is excellent. It's affordable for the whiskey of its class. Um, it's right up there in the whiskey class of the Macallan 15 and 18. Um, and it's an affordable, maybe 150 to 200 US dollars a bottle <laughs> for a really smooth and good whiskey. And so um, before we start tasting, I just want to tell you too, I was really impressed with Aberfeldy's website. So I'm going to put it in the link in the description. They have a cool website. You can go on there. They have this amazing uh, video intro that gives you a little bit of a tour and talks a little bit about the whiskeys and how they make them. But then there's an area too, I love this, where you can upload pictures of yourself drinking Aberfeldy. <laughs> Who doesn't want to do that? I think that we're we're gonna to have to do that after this video, Kelsey. We're gonna to have to mm -hmm. do it. So and what part of Scotland are they from? Or where is the distillery? So um they're in the Highlands, and um that's a really good question. I'm gonna look that up really quick because I've never actually been there. <laughs> oh sorry. To miss yeah. No, that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's under the contact us. And you know, I've been all over Scotland. I love, love, love to travel around um, and uh, and see new places. Uh, Royal. Okay, so yeah, um, I'm about to find out where they are. They have a request <laughs> form. I think we're going to ask Google. But until we get on with Google about exactly where they are located, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so the 21 year old is a Which distinctive. Is a really good age. Yes, 21. <laughs> legal. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know, I, I just turned 21 for the is it 26th time. <laughs> oh my God, you look great. You know, <laughs> it's actually more than that. Um, <laughs> Just mm -hmm. really look. That's so, super funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a huge anyway. fan of this, the sweeter sides too. I love the space side whiskeys that have that honey sweeter. Um, I feel like you can drink more of it. Not that you need to drink a lot of whiskey in one sitting, but um, yeah, the PD ones, as you were saying, the PD is like, you just want a cigar and you want to like grow some hair in your chest and it's... Uh... 
You know, it's rough. Yes. And and then you will you won't be able to sleep lying down. You'll have to sit up in a chair all night because uh, <laughs> yeah. Especially at my age. <laughs> this is this is really quite funny. And for all of you who are tuning in and know anything about Aberfeldy, guess where it's located? Where? In Aberfeldy. <laughs> <laughs> that's hysterical I mean of course it is you know it's been a long day um Kelsey and I will talk a little bit more about it in a few minutes but we've been um working on producing Scott Week 2022 which is in April coming up in April and we are like you know around the clock <laughs> it's been all kinds of fun but it's the doers so uh yeah it's situated in the center of Scotland, some five miles east of Loch Tay in the town of Kenmore, and about eight miles from Loch Tamil. Mm. Aberfeldy relies on a freshwater stream called the Pithily Burn, which runs alongside the distillery. I'm not sure if I said that correctly. However, there you go. And it is made by doers. It was here that our pursuit of Scotch whiskey, they say, perfection began in 1898. Again, another Scotch that began during the Victorian times. There's so many Scotches that, that started and distillery started during the Victorian times. Then mm -hmm. as well. So they would have started the same year, the same wow. year. Yeah, so. The Victorian really knew how to live, huh? <laughs> I know they had it down. That was also, we were talking about that. That's also the, the same time that Queen Victoria actually went up and purchased Balmoral Castle from the Farkasons, who's one of the one of the um, chiefs or one of the clans in Clan Hatton. However, that's another story for another day. Um, the stills were first produced in the beautifully balanced single malt whiskey in the heart of Dewar's blend. So this is very interesting. So Duars, and also they say, I think, you know, all the whiskeys say that they have the best selling whiskey. Have you noticed that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Aberfeldy and Duars, if you're, if I'm, you know, I, I'm not mean to be making fun of you at all by any stretch of the imagination. I'm sure that they're all best selling whiskeys. I mean, especially during COVID. Best thing to do is to get, break out your whiskey and let's have some. <laughs> They first planned in 1896 by the sons of John Dewar. Dewar's Aberfeldy Distillery is the only Scotch whiskey distillery built by the Dewar family. Dewar's was already a highly successful brand of blended whiskey, renowned for its quality, and the company needed more of a single malt whiskey to use in its blend, and so they created Aberfeldy. That's, that's amazing, I didn't know that. I, I, for one, like uh, single malts, and I actually prefer them to the blends. How about you, Kelsey? I know you're a huge fan of scotch. That's actually kind of how we met. Yeah. <laughs> Bagpipes and scotch is how we met, for sure. Um, <laughs> you know, I think it depends on the evening. If I'm uh, feeling really good about life and want something pure, I love the single malts. But um, yeah, I feel like if uh, I, I like the single malts when I'm alone or like with one person and can enjoy a one-on-one -on -one intimate conversation and actually sit there and enjoy it. Whereas I love the blended whiskeys for socializing when I don't have to like completely focus on the whiskey. I, um, and yeah, I like to enjoy the luxuries of life in the moment and not have to feel distracted. Mm -hmm. You know, that's an excellent point because you're absolutely right. Oftentimes we're drinking scotch and you really have to stop and slow down and think about it. We've talked about, you know, the way that they, they do the scotch tastings where you need to like put it in your mouth, let it roll back onto your tongue, breathe it in. You can't really do that when you're with other people. You're trying to concentrate and focus on your conversation. That's a good point. I'm going to start drinking all by myself out back by my pool. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> so <I'm kidding. laughs> I know just, just teasing you so um so with that let's go ahead and and try this now this is heavily honeyed um and they also they they age this whiskey in wine bar barrels I can't talk either I need some whiskey <laughs> then I can talk better you 
doing great. <laughs> yeah. So they they do um, they do age in wine barrels sometimes, which adds to the color um, and and the smoothness of this whiskey. But the honey, because they age Aberfeldy for so long, and for twenty one years, it really pulls in those honey flavors and a little bit of lavender. Um, so let's just go ahead and and try some. Now, some of the reviews do say, and you know, everybody's palate's different. I feel like everybody has a different uh, way of experiencing things through their mouth, whether it be food or drink. So it'd be really fun if you guys put something in the in the comments down below of, you know, if you've tried Aberfeldy, um, which scotches you do prefer? Um, if you don't like scotch at all, whatever your favorite beverage is, we're just glad you're tuning in and you're um, contributing to our show here. So let us know what you prefer. Let us know if there's a scotch you'd like for us to feature, because we'd be happy to do that and pull in um, some of the brand ambassadors to do that as well, who really know what they're talking about. <laughs> and we could have some great fun with it. Um, but this is supposed to be um, orangey, and I do smell some orange, vanilla, spices, and sandalwood. Mm -hmm. Lots of honey smell to me though. So um, anyway, and this is such a smooth whiskey that um, a lot of people say that it's just fine drinking it neat without ice or without water, but you should always drink your whiskey the way you like it best. So I'm just gonna smell this and I hear, Cheers to you, Kelsey. I wish you had some too. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> that looks amazing. Mojito. Right. <laughs> that is so smooth. I'm going to say yes. Yeah. Uh, you can Good. definitely drink this neat, which is my preferred way of drinking it. And I do want to, you know, I always bring up my angel share glass. Whiskey dropper. Thank you, Pam and Mike, for my beautiful whiskey dropper. Um, and this is going to drop some water in there. Isn't that cute? So if you go on to Angel Share Glass, I didn't put the link in last week. I'll do it this week. Um, these are so cute. You can get these. These make great presents for any whiskey drinker out there in your life. Um, they also have little angels made out of blown glass that have Angel Share inside the angel. And while I put some couple drops of uh, water in my whiskey, Kelsey, what's angel share? <laughs> so let me see if I can get this right. Um, it's been a year since last uh, year in Scotland that we interviewed uh, angel share. But um, so from what I understand, it's the uh, amount of whiskey evaporates from the storage process. So whiskey is in the barrel for 21 years uh, a percentage of it evaporates and it's a gift to the angels and um, so is, do I have that right yes that's perfect yes it is and so it's great because these cute again for all of your uh, whiskey lovers and whiskey drinkers out there for which we don't know any I'm sorry we just don't know <laughs> and somebody who has everything this this makes a great gift I need to actually pick up one of their little angels but you're going to go ahead and click on their website and see the little angels they're so cute what an amazing gift that is um, to give somebody or this little dropper here and they come in different this is a little honey um a honey thing but it's they come in different types of um, angels and different things are so beautiful so visit them and go ahead and purchase some of their um, products and enjoy in the meantime there's a little bit of water in my whiskey you know and I'm gonna say it tastes right about the same to me I don't actually notice a difference in this whiskey putting some water into it mm. Just, uh, you must have had a lot. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it, probably it, it probably brought the alcohol content down by just a little, <laughs> but that's it. So what a great whiskey, you know, um, not to be sexist at all. I always bring this up, but I feel like this is a, this is great for the ladies as well, because it is so smooth and it's a little tough on us girls. Sometimes I'm drinking a really heavy, heavy. And we were talking earlier about heavily peated whiskeys. This is one of those smooth ones. that's going to go down nicely. And if you've never tried whiskey before, this is a great place to start. 
It's so true. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's definitely where I started. Uh, my uncle, when I was 21, he started me on actually Irish whiskey and cigars. And the Irish whiskeys tend to be a little bit sweeter in general. Um, but that's how, that was my segue into uh, the scotch and to the scotch whiskeys. And you're totally right. And as you mentioned before, if you do want to stay up all night and you're, you know, you can enjoy um a single mott heavily peated whiskey those are amazing really special and um it sits differently in your system too which is a nice feeling like i feel like the sweeter ones are tend to be more heart centered and the peter ones are more like gut centered like let's talk about some creative ideas and maybe we should drink more peat when we're talking about scott week ideas <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I agree. We should start doing that. Oh, when we have our little powwows, we should do that for sure. So <laughs> everyone, make sure you pick up a bottle of Aberfeldy. If you don't pick up a whole bottle, you know, go visit and patron your favorite place where you can enjoy some at the bar and just try it out. It's really amazing. And who knew that it was made by doers? Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us please do not forget to like and subscribe and we're going to blast you with our scott week stuff real quickly here while we have an opportunity because scott week's coming up around the corner and as most of you know you know we were meant to be um a series of events in april mm -hmm. and we had to cancel that right before the pandemic happened five weeks out it was kind of sad for us, but then we came into this virtual world and we started um, broadcasting here and through IGTV, Instagram, and all of our social media and building that out. And we've had such a great time and great fun doing it. And so we are very much continuing that, although as we talked about earlier, we've been recording a lot on Zoom. We're going to be out in the field. We're going to be out and about recording in Scotland and interviewing people in person. So it should be a lot more interesting 2022. But Kelsey, what do we have coming up on our schedule right around the corner for 2022? Yes, so excited. So LA has a professional rugby team. So on April 3rd, uh, we have uh, the LA Galantini's uh, rugby match that we are su supporting and going to. And we also have the um, some Brits, some British communities going there. Um, and then we also have ScottCon. It's a virtual weekend beautiful interviews with industry leaders and guests and so that is April 23rd and 24th um, so April 23rd is more business orientated um, so we have people in Scotland and also in the U.S. and around the world talking about uh, business side of things and then Sunday is more about the culture and heritage so we have um, people in like clan chiefs and visit Scotland has uh, these beautiful videos of Scotland and um, so please tune in it's going to be on our YouTube channel so please like and subscribe you can sign up for our newsletter and keep up to date on everything that's going on beautifully said and so you want to tune in because we have special guests we have a special presentation by the Royal Scottish National Orchestra Oh my gosh, I just, I'm so um, proud that they have gifted us a symphony. So we'll be playing that as well. And then we have uh, special presentations by the Royal Military Edinburgh, I'm not going to say this right, sorry, let me start over. <laughs> the Royal Edinburgh Military Tattoo, and the people that put on the tattoo every year, the French Society who supports the French Festival of Edinburgh, and we have so many more guests. It's going to be so fun. Um, we're going to have the Lord Lion uh, come on and talk to us a little bit about heraldry. We have some of the uh, producers of Scottish Highland Games here in the United States, also in Canada. Uh, we have business leaders um, over in Scotland. I didn't realize this, but did you know Scotland produces the most satellites of any country in the whole world? I did not know that. Yeah, so interesting fact. So yes, like and subscribe, stay tuned. You don't want to miss any of our fun content. And then come on a journey with us this year as Kelsey and I go to Scotland and we're out interviewing people and seeing beautiful things. And we will be um, producing this straight through our YouTube channel. So come along with us and have a great time. And we hope to see you back here soon. Bye. Thanks for being on, Kelsey. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>